Bretterwisser Spezial. Arne und René sprechen heute mit Eric Lang über seine aktuellen Spiele. Wir sitzen hier mit äh, Eric Lang, äh, der sich dankenswerte bereit erklärt hat, ein kurzes Interview mit uns zu führen. Wir sitzen auch vor seinem neuen Spiel. Wir werden das jetzt auch in Englisch machen. Genau, nur die kurze Einleitung auf Deutsch. Und daher darf der Arm direkt jetzt mal umswitchen aufs Englische. Uh, yeah, we have here Mr. Lang. Uh, Guten Tag. <lacht> I said English. Oh. Good day. <lacht> Hello. Um, yeah, you are look, you, you are a busy man right now. You have It a is couple, a very busy a couple, show. more than a couple of games uh, right now on on the tables. It's true. Well, so it is a little bit of an optical illusion. Um, <laughs> it looks like I've done 80 games in the yeah, last it, year, but we, we were talking about two hours ago about about the, that you have a lot of games right now on the here on the fair. Yeah. So part of it is. Or is it um, just coincidence? A little bit of it is that. So. Uh, I mean, of course, I do work on several games at once, but not this many. Mm -hmm. Some games I work on get, uh, because I work with a few different publishers, they don't coordinate their schedules. So some publishers fast track a game, some publishers take extra long on a game. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a game schedule ends up getting re-slotted. So this year, um, I, I rather, I probably shouldn't name exact games. So, you know, one game got fast tracked really quickly. One game took a long time. Okay. Another game was slot to come at the same show, so they just all, all the games I worked on in the last two years basically showed up here. So then the next two years you have no game. <laughs> that I thought that was true, but that's not true. So I got three more games coming out next year. Okay, oh. so we are safe. It's not the best thing, uh, the worst thing. No, no, no. I'm I'm very I'm blessed and happy to be doing this for a living. Yeah, we are sitting here on the on the table where uh, Arcadia Quest is set up. Mm -hmm. That's a minute miniature game. Uh, it's a board oh, how game. Would you, would you, it how is would a board. It's an adventure board game. Uh, with it miniatures. is. It has lots and lots of cool miniatures in it. Um, yeah. Of course, because every game done by Cool Mini or not has tons and tons of awesome plastic. <laughs> They look so beautiful. Um, this game is actually an homage to uh, some of the old school uh, Games Workshop style ga uh, campaign games, where mm -hmm. you could uh, where you could play these uh, cool campaigns that were uh, many sessions that are uh, interrelated and interlinked. Um, but I just wanted to do a very modern design take on it, make the sessions shorter, the, se the play time shorter, more economy of rules. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a trend, shorter games, right? Absolutely. I mean, no, some people would like to uh, want, want to play four hour long games, but... Not me. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> uh, that's so my, I basically took my short attention span and applied it to a classic old school of design. Um, and... Uh, I also took a lot of my trading card game background mm -hmm. um, and made it made the uh, the way the interactions work in this to be very card based. Um, you'd recognize like the style, I think, if you play some of my card games. Yeah. Um, and so, essentially, this is the adventure game that I want to play, and hopefully, the market agrees. Yeah, Re Rene took a took a copy of copy. it, and he's pretty excited. And it's very heavy. <laughs> It's it's heavy, yeah. It is a big game, yes. yes. But it, it it isn't like like decent second edition. It's it's like you play against the game against the players. Yes. Uh, so the the I uh, have a buzz phrase. I call the PVPVE player versus player versus environment. Yeah. You guys are ultimately competing against each other, but you are um, each you are using the board on each other's turns to screw each other up. And you have this role playing mechanism where you can level up your heroes or your your guilds yes uh, that so there's a campaign system there are 11 scenarios in the game you'll be playing six in any given uh in any given campaign and the outcome of uh whoever wins or so i say finishes the story quest in one of the sessions will unlock special features of the two scenarios that it's related to later on in the campaign that are exclusive to that player so and of course the winner of that campaign also gets to choose which where to go so Every session, every campaign should play a little differently. Yeah, it looks it looks stunning. I mean, yeah, they did an amazing job with the miniatures. Yeah, I think it's a trend. Miniatures in in, in board games yeah. are getting huge. <laughs> and because at the end of the day, I mean, I'll admit it. I'm like, I'm ten. I'm ten years old, right? I love <laughs> playing with toys. Yeah, and the this game would. As proud as I am of the mechanics and how uh, how well it plays, 
I wouldn't have nearly as much fun if it was with chits, right? Or even yeah. with standees. Or even right? Or with meeples, right? Like, yeah. I, I want my, I want my orc with axes. I want <laughs> Schmetterling the troll with this <laughs> bag of bones, right? Yeah, I was, I was really surprised that it, they release it in Germany, in Germany, in German language. I mean, I, I, I thought it would never come to Germany. I was surprised too. I have only found this out two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, so this game actually, uh, so the, it was launched on Kickstarter at first and it was a pretty big Kickstarter. So we knew already that it was going to have some traction, but the, um, the pre-orders on the retail side were stunning. They were, they, were, they just exploded. Uh, and Asmodee played this last year, actually at this show, we mm -hmm. played it with the guys at Asmodee. And, uh, I wasn't, I didn't have a chance to see what their reaction was, but apparently they really liked it and they picked yeah. it up. Yeah. Um, I think this game will do pretty well here. It is a little bit more, I wouldn't say it's more Euro, but it's because, I mean, there's a fair amount of luck in it, right? Um, but it is controllable luck, mm -hmm. and uh, but the the economy of mechanics is a little bit Euro. Yeah. And there's competition. I mean... There, there's competition, and there's, yes, and you kill, yeah. you do kill each other. However, yeah. um, everything in the everything about the game system is set up to... Uh, positively reward instead of negatively reward mm -hmm. so when you die you come back right away but it gives a positive reward to one of your opponents it's great um, so, and the game actually also also encourages you to pick on different people at different times because the quests uh will, you have to finish three quests and the first one of the quests is to kill somebody from an opponent the first person to finish a quest gets bonus gold yeah so once somebody has killed say one of your players Mm -hmm. then nobody else will get the bonus by picking on you. So they want to go somewhere else. Otherwise, they're hurting their own victory. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, sounds really good. And I um, want to know what Rene thinks about it, and he will talk about it in the podcast. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about the other games that you have here on the trade fair. Sure. Um, you might have to tell me because I'm, I haven't seen too much of the, the hall. I know I've, Conquest is here, Warhammer Conquest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just saw XCOM, which yeah. also surprised me. It surprised I, me too. <laughs> we, we talked about, with another blogger about XCOM like 10 minutes ago and he, he played it already this morning. He played it already. Well, wow. I mean, the prototype version, some kind of prototype, but he said <laughs> okay. it looks, looks amazing. I am very excited about XCOM. I'm, I will, I'm a little scared. Um, because, because it is of the expectations. Well, it's very new, right? We're, we're trying, a, we're trying some new things, and mm -hmm. it's that was the goal. That was what made me excited about it in the first place. But yeah, it's, whenever it's, you try new things, right? There's there's a big there's big degree of risk. The market could always say we don't agree with you, but um, I, I love that FFG took the the uh, like they're the market leader right now in this type of game, but they still take risks like this. Yeah, yeah it's it's. New thing, like, mm -hmm. like new Neuland in Germany. Neuland, yep, yep, it, oh, frontier territory. Frontier probably. territory. It's everybody, everybody is figuring out how to do, how to make it, like, what to make with the, with the new technology and what, what will be possible. And in Germany, also, the publishers are trying to figure yeah. out how to use Implement the new the devices right. with board games. Well, I think ultimately with XCOM, the the thinking behind XCOM wasn't exactly how do we incorporate devices. It was how do we use technology that everybody has mm -hmm. to enhance the board game play. So it was very important that for XCOM that we were making a board game, right? The, the game is supposed to be about above the table play. It's supposed to matter that you and a bunch of your friends are sitting at the table. <laughs> um, we didn't want to make a computer game with pieces. Yeah, that's, so, that, that's the danger. That's the danger, right? So basically the, the design goal of XCOM was to make a game that really to make a cooperative game about about arguing about how to win with your friends at, uh, using a medium heavy game mm -hmm. and the app turns it into a medium light game because it handles the administration the and puts the, the time pressure on you. The handling is but the fact game. that you're using a board, the fact that you're moving plastic around, the fact that the AI is only this cold, distant threat in the background <laughs> that one player only gets to pay attention to is that all comes together, I think, to make the board game experience about like limited communication yeah. and uh, and tension between players, even though you guys are trying to go for the same goal. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about for this. I mean, I played XCOM like 15 years ago, the original. The Me too. Pixel, Me too. Pixel art. Yeah. <laughs> and Enemy Unknown. I'm a big fan of the yeah. franchise. I just hope you weren't expecting a squad-based game because that's not <laughs> what this is. 
Yeah, but can you say when it will be out? I have no idea, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I was surprised to see it here. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's... I mean, it should be this that's year. That's interesting. <laughs> it should, well, as a designer, I'm not like... I'm not so much in tune with the release schedules. I just, yeah. I can't keep up. Yeah. So I know generally when things are expected to be out. For example, I was surprised to find out that Dice Masters is out here in Germany. Is it, is it in German? Uh, as oh. far as I know, it is being localized. It is. Oh, oh cool. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it would never come out in Germany. So I, I, I said, okay, Dice so Masters. I might, never, yeah, for, I for might be wrong. In fact, there's something over there we could ask about that right now. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> So if I'm wrong, WizKids, I apologize. <laughs> oh, okay. No problem. Uh, and Conquest is uh, Conquest is out. Conquest is out and, and for sale. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw it. Yeah, and localized. And yes, and localized. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's another one that I was very. Uh, I mean, I finished the design of that game a year ago. So this is. Uh, it just. It's. It was. It's a. It's a complicated game that we tried to make as simple as possible, and we knew that. We wanted to. This is a, it's an LCG that's following Netrunner, mm, so yeah, we wanted to take all the time we could to make it the most polished possible experience. Yeah. So we just took our time, um, and it like we could have released it eight months ago, but we just wanted to spend right. many many months on the tiniest tiniest little details. And it's most people won't notice, but that's the point. That's the yeah. point of polish, right? When you don't notice the details, that's yeah. We we played <laughs> UniQuest like this game there over there. Mm -hmm. Uh, this afternoon and it isn't out because they said they want to make it perfect it has to be perfect with the it, it tries new things also and they want to make it perfect and uh, that's yeah. a, that's the right attitude maybe it's the, it, it will be the right attitude but, but people are screaming and say oh no I cannot buy it here <laughs> then wait six months there are enough other games that is true <laughs> that is true Arcadia Quest for, for example, example. <laughs> for exa is it on sale? I don't yeah. even know. Yeah, yes. Uh, it is on sale. I yeah. saw it. Yeah, it's on sale. You saw, you saw it. Yeah, it's on sale. Oh, I'm glad I listened to this podcast. I learn something new <laughs> yeah, every day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you for the time. Thank you. Uh, have a good fair. I will. I will do my best. It's, uh, How long will you be here? All the whole, all four days. All, all four days. jet lag demo, days. Demo, uh, <laughs> Demoing games. Uh, mostly signing, actually. Uh, I, 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 the demo teams that they have here are so much better than us that the, they don't need us. <laughs> He wants a signature, yeah. probably. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Happy to. Okay, wir okay. verabschieden uns. Wir sind wieder ins Deutsche. Danke nochmal Eric Lang für seine Zeit. Bitte schön. Und ja, mal gucken, was jetzt noch passiert. Genau. Tschüss. Tschüss. Ciao.